This morning on DC News Now, we're tracking some of the areas of the patchy, dense fog down to less than a mile in Colbeck. We're about a mile in Woodstock, even out towards Winchester, less than a mile. Three miles, or now four miles, in DC for that visibility. So just be mindful that as you're stepping out the door. I'll have more details on when this fog lifts and what we can expect for your Tuesday afternoon coming up. Also coming up this morning, a four-year-old shot in D.C. To hear from the district's police chief and where their investigation stands this morning. And new school names why one northern Virginia county is pressing for change this morning. And expanding sports betting in the district. What the future of placing bets in Washington, D.C. could look like. All right, it's 6 o'clock on this Tuesday morning. Thanks for joining us. I'm Corey James. Good morning. I'm Tanaya Wright. Meteorologist Jackie Layers has a look at our Tuesday forecast. And Jackie, it's a bit of a foggy and a drizzly start. Yes, we were tracking the fog and the mist out there this morning. Just be mindful that you may need the umbrella before you're stepping out the door. And not only that, leave a little bit of extra time to head out this morning and so that you can arrive to your destination safely, considering we are seeing some very low visibility. Leave a little bit of extra room for that following distance as well. Down to about a mile of visibility in Frederick right now, but we're less than that in Culpeper as well as Winchester, about a mile in Woodstock and Kaiser. And again, in the district, we're right about four miles of visibility. Dense fog advisory has been issued, but only for parts of the area. And this is mainly for Culpeper County as well as Madison and Rappahannock counties in Virginia until 10 a.m. this morning. So that fog will continue to lift later on this morning, still tracking some areas of light mist. Really tough for the radar to depict, but overall, we'll likely see that mist. Uh, dissipate as that fog continues to lift and we'll see drier conditions developing later on this afternoon under some partly to mainly cloudy skies back off towards our west we have a front and that front will be approaching the area as we head towards tomorrow that could bring a few rain showers out there as we get towards tomorrow but for the day today we'll likely see some of that sunshine breaking out as we get towards 11 a.m and even right around 3 p.m some of that sunshine trying to break out through the cloud cover but temperatures will be approaching 70 degrees for those high temperatures on your tuesday afternoon also Low 70s for tomorrow, then a bit cooler, but at least more sunshine towards the end of the week. Uh, more details on that coming up. But right now, Shanika is here with the all important traffic update. How's it looking out there right now? Well, it's not looking so great. We're looking at 95 heading southbound. This is coming out of Baltimore, heading toward our area in the Elkridge area. We have a serious crash in investigation, so that's why you're seeing bumper to bumper delays. Let's flip over to the map so you can see the mess we're dealing with this morning. This crash happened right between. Uh, Maryland 195 and 100. So you can see a lot of congestion build up closer to the point where you're shut down completely. That crash happened right before a Maryland 100. So again, I would avoid 95 heading southbound. Coming from Baltimore, trying to get to our area, of course. BW Parkway, you're seeing bailout traffic. Many people are using BW to get heading southbound over to the district or to Maryland. Looking at the rest of our region, in that outer loop stretch, you're dealing with another incident. Uh, this is past Connecticut Avenue to the right shoulder. So do be careful in Montgomery County, guys. Thank you, Shanika. Breaking now this morning, Prince George's County Police are investigating two deadly accidents. The first one happened just after 10 o'clock last night on Tucker Road near Palmer Road in Fort Washington. We are told a woman died when her vehicle overturned. The cause of that accident still remains under investigation. And county police are also investigating a deadly hit and run in Glen Arden. This happened just after midnight on Martin Luther King Jr. Highway at Ardwick Ardmore Road. This is video from our contributor Larry Calhoun of DC Real Time News. The vehicle that hit the man did not stay on the scene. If you have any information, you're asked to call Prince George's Crime Solvers. And this morning, many questions after a four-year-old boy and two men were shot in Northwest D.C. That is right. This all happened along Kennedy Street Northwest, and that is where we find our Lex Wars this morning. So, Lex, what can you tell us about this? Well, police are still actively investigating this shooting, and they worked overnight to try and figure out exactly what happened and who is responsible. Now, the shooting happened around 6.30 in the evening yesterday. Police were called to the area, and they found two men by a vehicle, both with gunshot wounds. Those men were involved in some sort of shooting that happened back and forth between a, 
other people. And during that shooting, a four year old boy was hit. Chief Conti says that a family member took that boy to the Children's Hospital. Now, good news here is all three people are expected to be okay, but we did see an emotional police chief as he discussed the details. Honestly, you know, this is the type of thing that you see when people recklessly use firearms in our streets. A four year old, unintended, who had nothing to do with this, gets injured by someone else's reckless behavior. And one of those men who was shot is being placed under arrest. Of course, as we find out more information about who that is and any other suspects that are named or arrested, we'll bring you that both here and online. Right now, investigators are also combing through surveillance video of surrounding area as well as from people's doorbell cameras. And they are asking folks in the neighborhood to be checking their cameras as well and report anything they find to the police. As we find out more information about the investigation, we'll bring it to you both here and online. Line. Live in Washington, Lex Juarez, DC News Now. All right, Lex, thank you. Your time right now is 6.05 this morning. One person is recovering after being shot near a Northern Virginia shopping center. This happened on Little River Turnpike in Fairfax County just before 6 o'clock last night. Right now, no word on the shooter. We're also working to learn more about the victim and their condition. And this morning, Montgomery County police are searching for two suspects who they say opened fire in downtown Silver Spring. Bullets hit a business and car yesterday morning. It happened near Veterans Plaza and the Civic Center. Surveillance video showing a man pointing a gun before running out and later coming back. A second suspect is captured racing down the stairs holding a backpack. If you have any information about either suspects, you're asked to contact Montgomery County Police. And covering the district this morning, a new bill has been introduced that could expand sports betting. The legislation was put forward by Council Member Alyssa Silverman yesterday. If approved, it would pave the way for companies like FanDuel and DraftKings to launch mobile apps here in D.C. Right now, gamblers in the district can only use one app, GameBet DC. The app is operated by the DC Lottery and Gaming, and has received criticism since it first launched. GameBet crashed on Super Bowl Sunday and lost revenue in its first year of operations. If we're going to have a legal sports betting program, let's have it generate revenue. We would take the approach that Virginia's uh, taken and Maryland is going to take very soon, which is we would just tax the revenue of those mobile apps. The proposed bill would terminate the contract with GameBets DC's developers when it expires in 2024. We have reached out to DC Lottery for a comment, but we have not yet heard back. And happening today, the Loudoun County Virginia School Board is set to review the names of nine of its schools. Among the reasons for changes are connections to Confederate leaders. If the schools are renamed, the community would be invited to offer suggestions. The board says it wants this to be a teaching moment for all students. And this morning, athletic events are canceled at Stafford High School in Northern Virginia. Now, Stafford County School says other after school activities will be back on today. This all comes after 670 students were out sick on Monday and more than 1,000 students were out sick on Friday. Today's games are canceled, but student athletes will be able to attend their practices. A spokesperson for the school says multiple sick students tested positive for the flu, while others were reporting stomach issues. Now the school system will reevaluate activities again later this week. And new data shows Virginia's fourth and eighth grade students took another step back in reading and math this year. According to the nation's report card, this follows national trends. However, Virginia saw steeper drops than many other states, with fourth graders dropping below the national average in reading scores. Now it is becoming a hot topic on the campaign trail in Northern Virginia school board races, including at a virtual forum for two candidates seeking spots on Arlington County School Board. A year's worth of achievement in one year, that's not going to be enough right now. The focus on evidence-based instruction is, is a really critical piece. Fairfax County Parents Association is claiming, or is chiming in rather as well, criticizing the school board for, quote, focusing on a hundred other issues, but never tackling the pursuit of academic excellence and never truly tackling the impacts of COVID policy-induced lost learning, end quote. Your time right now is 6.09. The former Secretary of Britain's Treasury, Rishi Sunak, is set to become Britain's Prime Minister today. The transfer of power will become official today when Sunak meets with King Charles III. Former Prime Minister Liz Truss just officially resigned after wrapping up her last speech in London. Let's take a listen. 
Our country continues to battle through a storm. But I believe in Britain. I believe in the British people. And I know that brighter days lie ahead. Sunak is set to deliver his own remarks sometime later today. He will become the country's first prime minister of color, as well as the first prime minister of Hindu faith. At 42, Sunak will also be the youngest leader of the country in about 200 years. He was an investment banker before he got into politics. He and his wife have a combined net worth of about $830 million. Now, that is all according to the Sunday Times. That makes him one of the wealthiest prime ministers in the nation's history. Hey, it's right now with 610. We are your local election headquarters and big deciding factors tonight ahead of the Pennsylvania Senate debate. Current Republican Senator Pat Toomey is retiring after this term and the race could flip or keep key seats in the Senate. Now, Republican candidate Dr. Mehmet Oz and Democrat Lieutenant Governor John Fetterman will take the debate stage tonight in Harrisburg. This morning, polls from CNN show Fetterman with 51% support, while Oz is expected to trail behind with about 45% of the vote. We, of course, will have the debate pre show here on DC News Now tonight at 7 30. We'll also have the Senate debate live tonight that starts at 8 o'clock.